Welcome to HCAM News Focus, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with everything you need to know about Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News Focus, we will show you the top five Hopkinton Hillers highlights from the 2014-2015 fall and winter sports season. First, I want to take this time to recognize some of the Hiller Championship teams so far this school year. The Hillers wrestling team made the playoffs and Josh Sokol won the Division II state wrestling title in the 285-pound division. The Hopkinton Hillers girls track team prevailed, winning the TBL championship, defeating Norton 92-83. The Hillers girls indoor track team has only one league loss in the past nine years, which actually came against Norton during the season. A handful of Hillers girls also went on to compete in the Nationals in New York City. And the Hopkinton Hillers cheer team also won their fourth straight TVL championship this year. Other Hillers postseason appearances include golf, swimming, boys indoor track, football, volleyball, and basketball. Speaking of basketball, the boys team is featured at number five in our sports highlight countdown. The Hopkinton Hillers basketball team took on Medfield Wednesday, February 11th with a chance to clinch a postseason spot. Late in the second quarter, Jake Doherty doing what he likes to do, hitting threes and draws the foul, misses the free throw, and it was 32-27, Medfield leading at half. Third quarter, the Hillers fight back early. Ryan passes to Odell. Odell bobbles, regains control, and laces it through. Then on the following inbound, Mitch Nagel catches Medfield sleeping. Gets the steal, misses the shot, rebuttal no good, but Pat Ryan takes care of business to put the Hillers up 39-37. Medfield leading late in the fourth quarter, 59-55. Matt Locke locks in and bangs a three from the top to make it a one-point game. The game would go into overtime, tied at 65. Unfortunately for Medfield, Matt Locke stayed locked in, nails this three to make it 68-66 Hopkinton. Then following possession, Pat Ryan with the steal, takes it coast to coast and off the boards. Hiller's up 70 to 66. Hopkinton never looks back and takes the victory 77 to 72. Matt Locke put up 21 points in the win. And the Hillers are in the playoffs as they get their 10th win of the year against Medfield. On February 13th, Norton beat Hopkinton 56 to 35. And then in the last game of the regular season, the Hillers defeated Medway 69 to 57 to finish 11 and nine. The Hopkinton Hillers clinched the fifth seed in the Division II Central bracket. Thanksgiving is a time for family, great food, and of course, football. On a snowy Thanksgiving morning this school year, the Hopkinton Hillers gave a memorable performance against their longtime rival, the Ashland Clockers. Hopkinton and Ashland met on Thanksgiving morning for the 91st time in the home of the Clockers. Snow fell through the previous night into the morning, making the field a sloppy, wet mess, which meant for a very defensive game. First drive of the game, Pat Ryan eludes a couple of defenders and completes to Hayden Pereira, who was forced out of bounds at around the Ashland 45-yard line. Then a few plays later, Jake Keller at quarterback. Pat Ryan spread to the left. Pat Ryan catches the football. The Ashland defense stepped it up, however. Drew Donahue stuffed here for a loss. Then Jake Keller sacked. The Clockers defense get the job done and keep the game scoreless. On Ashland's possession, quarterback Mitch Porter finds Philip Cooper under pressure, and Cooper turns on the Jets and breaks into Hiller's territory. Colin Hanrahan then sets up Ashland nicely within the Hiller's 20-yard line heading to the second quarter. Ashland keeps the charge going with this great catch by Max Feinberg. He says he was in bounds, and so does the official of first and goal for Ashland. Then a Hopkinton pass interference call sets up this Mitch Porter touchdown to make it a six to nothing game. A Joe Kirkak extra point put the clockers up seven with 816 left in the first half. After the Ashland touchdown, both defenses went back and forth, forcing punts. But then in the fourth quarter, Pat Ryan goes to Matt Decina here for the first down. 
And then later in the drive, Pat Ryan connects with Matt Decina for the touchdown. Hillers, an extra point away from tying the game. Problem was, they were still an extra point away from tying. The Hillers said, you know what? It's Thanksgiving. Let's go for the conversion. Ryan takes a snap and throws it incomplete. 6.56 left to go in the game. Ashland up on Hopkinton, 7-6. The Hillers then go for the onside kick, but Ashland scoops it up and has the football with great field position. Ashland moved the chains a couple times, but the Hillers defense bent but did not break. They forced the turnover on downs. Hillers get the ball at their own 30 with 2.24 left to go in the game. Keller to Pat Ryan. Oh, off of Ryan's hands and the clockers have the interception. Ashland has a chance to end it here with just a first down. All they need is about a yard, but oh no, Colin Hanrahan jumps and pushes the Clockers back five. Clockers here for the knockout punch, and it's incomplete. Hillers get the ball back. Drew Donahue takes a little pass here, and some good footwork leads to the Hillers first down. Keller then has a big completion of Pat Ryan. Hillers get quickly back to the line. Keller this time finds Pereira inside the 10 yard line and the Hillers are in business. A flag pushed the Hillers back. So now it was about a 31 yard field goal try for Adam Giordano. This is for the lead. Snap, spot, kick, and it's gonna be. And it's good, nine to seven Hopkinton with not a lot of time left. Hillers kick off and Ashland is hoping for a miracle. Lateral followed by lateral, but Hopkinton special teams come through and secure the 9-7 victory. The Hillers finish the season five and six, Ashland six and five. Congratulations on a great season to the 2014 Hopkinton Hillers team and a Thanksgiving win against the Ashland Clockers. In our first highlight of the countdown, you saw the Hopkinton Hillers boys basketball team clinch a playoff spot with a win against Medfield. How would they do in the first round of the playoffs? Well, here it is in our number three highlight. In the quarterfinals of the Central Division II playoffs, the 11 and 9 Hopkinton Hillers took on the 11 and 7 Wayland Warriors at the Wayland Gymnasium. First quarter, Matlock hits the first field goal of the game for the Hillers to make it 4-2, but Joey Lucchetti responds with a three, making it 7-2 Wayland. Hayden Pereira did a nice job defensively, a hard block underneath. The Warriors outscored the Hillers in the first, 17-13. Second quarter, Mitch Nagel grabbed this miss, Jake Doherty three, and put it off the glass for two. Moments later, Jonathan Ng hits at the halftime buzzer for two. The Hillers led at the half, 23-22. Third quarter, Jake Doherty doing what he does, hitting for three to put the Hillers up 29 to 23. Waylon was not going away, however. Wesley Jones draws the and one here. After three quarters of play, it was Hillers 33, Waylon 30. A whole lot of free throw shooting in the fourth quarter as both teams were not afraid to get physical. Joey Lucchetti hit four free throws in the quarter. Waylon pulled within eight with just under three minutes left. In the first 10 minutes of the second half, Waylon went 4 for 34 from the field, but had a late surge. Andrew Straub hits here with a rebuttal to make it 49 to 43 with below two minutes left in the fourth. Wesley Jones hit for three with 115 left to put Waylon within five. Waylon trying to make it a one possession game. Jones misses the three. Hayden Pereira grabs the rebound, but then airs it out and it's intercepted by Straub. And then Straub airs it back up court to Dylan Mortis, who hit, and with 15.3 seconds left, it's a 51 to 48 lead for the Hillers. Waylon quickly fouls Hayden Pereira. Out as ever, and the first free throw is no good. Now this is the most important free throw of the game right here. You hit this, it's a two possession game. This is it. Got it. And the Hopkinton Hillers hold on to take down the Wayland Warriors 53-48. The Hillers advance to take on Marlboro at WPI in the semifinals. And the Hopkinton Hillers improved to 12-9 overall. Matt Locke had 19 points and Jake Doherty had 12 points in the Hillers' playoff victory. 
The Hillers boys basketball team went on to lose to Marlboro in the semifinals 55 to 40 in a close battle at Worcester Polytechnic Institute. One of the most memorable postseason runs this year belongs to the girls volleyball team. The 20 and 2 Hillers entered the semifinals on a 15 game winning streak and had 19 sweeps in their 20 victories overall. Their opponents were the Notre Dame Cougars, who were ranked number one in the state by many of the high school sports ranking websites. But 18 kills and 10 aces by Holly Adams helped lead the way for the Hillers in our next highlight. The Cougars have tried to do late in this match is try to not allow the Hillers to get the ball to Holly Adams for Adams to be able to use her power from up front. They're playing keep away from Adams and it's paid off for a few points. Jed Manning handles that one. Coop Ryder to Adams. Tipped and that's it. The Hillers go to the state championship with a remarkable three nothing sweep of the number one team in the state for division two, Notre Dame Academy. That was a tremendous match. And just what a terrific job by the Hillers. They dominated this matchup against the Cougars to come in to the state semifinals and sweep your opponent. It's just truly unbelievable. Uh, an unbelievable job by the Hillers. And they are heading to the state championship. Hey Holly, a tremendous match tonight. You came through, you dominated the what was ranked number one team in the state. You're going to the state championship. How does it feel? It feels so good. We worked really hard all season, so we deserve it. It's a great Most game. Most certainly. Now, you girls were very prepared out there tonight, obviously. Yeah. A lot of people thought this matchup was going to be a lot closer. But what do you have to say to any doubters of the Hopkinton Hillers? We were fired up, and we were playing for Hopkinton. So it's a good game. All right, well, terrific performance out Thank there. You. And best of luck in the state championship. Thank you. How does it feel to be heading to the state championship? This is an incredible feeling. I love this feeling. This is great. Sure, you know, much better than we've had in the past. You know, it's great to be on this side. Now this team has tremendous versatility, and all season long they just seem to get better and better. I believe it's 20 sweeps overall uh, for the Hillers volleyball squad, and just a, a tremendous all-around team. How does it feel to have this amount of talent on this team? We. We've had, this team has been together for three years. You know, all of the players, all the seniors on this team have been on since sophomores. So it wasn't a surprise to me. I, I've been counting on this team for a long time and um, we just, they pulled it all together this year. They've had, their goals from day one were to be in the running for a state championship. And today is just a, a great feeling because we accomplished one of our goals that we had preseason. So. Now, Holly Adams came up huge today, and she's come up huge in many matchups. But heading into this game against uh, Notre Dame Academy, I, I think most people thought it was going to be a lot closer due to the fact that Notre Dame Academy was ranked number one in the state. But you guys came in and showed them you don't care about rankings. Holly Adams took control of this game. Uh, did you expect a performance like this of such domination? I did. Well We've been, I feel like we've been flying under the radar a little bit. We, you know, numbers are numbers, rankings are rankings, but we know what we have and we have a powerhouse team with great defense and offensive weapons and a setter that's, you know, third year varsity setter. So we really have a, the complete team and that's how you get this far. You can't do it based on one player or two players. Holly came up strong. She's been doing that all, you know, for four years, varsity starter. So. She, they all, they all want it. They all wanted it. And what's been a lot of fun to watch is the chemistry that this team has. Obviously, they've been together for a while, especially the core. And I feel like the chemistry must help this team a lot in the success they've had. Definitely. They're, this team is a family. And they, like I said, they've been together for a long time. And, um, and it definitely translates onto the court. They're, they're, they played today for each other. They weren't playing for stats. I don't know what the stats are. I really don't. And they don't know what the stats are. They weren't looking at that. They weren't playing for that. They were playing for each other and to to win this game. You know, it's bigger than one person. And it's the postseason. 
is it. So is it back to the practice floor tomorrow? Yeah, I think we're going to, we might start a little bit late tomorrow, enjoy a little bit, have some talk time. But yeah, definitely, because there's still one game left. This was big, but we're, we're still practicing. Our season's not over, which is great. Coach, congratulations on heading to the state championship. Thank we you. hope you can take home the trophy. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. The next step for the Hillers girls volleyball team was the Division II state championship at Fitchburg High School against Weston. And in our number one highlight, the Hillers captured the ultimate prize. To serve. And it's long, that's it folks. Your Hopkinton Hillers are the Division II state champions in volleyball. They take the third set 25 to 14 for a three nothing sweep of Weston. You're state champions, how does it feel? I'm going to Disney World. <laughs> it feels amazing and I think that um, it's, it's kind of bittersweet because I don't get to show up with the girls tomorrow at practice and I, the, the saddest part was knowing that the season was over. But they deserve this, they've worked hard all year and you saw it, they're, it's a phenomenal team. It's, there, there really aren't any weaknesses and that's when you can win a championship, when you have a total complete team so so much talent on this team a tremendous comeback in that second matchup uh, they had can you talk about the comeback and just the there was some momentum shifts both ways early on but they just came through and they ended up with the dominant performance that they typically have had all season long I don't think they even heard the word lose or loss or you know that wasn't in their vocabulary coming into this match and even being down, they knew what they have to do. They're a seasoned, season, senior heavy team and they showed what they had today. Um, just being down just made their resolve stronger and they, you know, we came back and I think that pretty much showed the character of this team. I'll tell you what, it, it couldn't happen to a nicer team, more sportsmanship, top you know, always has been top of the league, and they're just, they're great girls. They're, they're a family. They might not be related, but this right here is a volleyball family, and, um, and I'm so proud. I miss, there's, there's so much love. I'm so proud of this team, so thank you. Coach, congratulations on being state champions. Thank you very much. So you guys are state champions. How does it feel? Oh, my God. This is an unbelievable feeling, like nothing else. Um, we really just work together so well. We all connect like the team chemistry is amazing and it couldn't be a better year to do it And I love it so much A lot of great versatility on this team seems you guys have a great relationship as well and What do you think was the biggest factor on why you ended up just having so much success? I think we all have our own strengths and we put them all together really just we just connect so well and state champs. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Okay, another question. On the last point, what were you feeling? I just felt like any other point, you know? We all just, every single point, we want to just pretend like it's like game point or anything, because every point matters. And just once it, oh, just felt so good. We all just piled in together, like a family. We are a family. Well, congratulations on being state champions. Thank you so much. Tremendous season. Thank you. How does it feel to be state champions? Oh, it feels amazing. It's unreal. I'm so happy. So great. It was a tremendous all-around performance all season long. So much versatility and talent on this team. It seems you guys Definitely. had a great relationship as well. Can you, yeah. can you tell us what you think the main reasons you ended up being state champions are? I think we're all playing together. We're so close as a team. We um, hang out all the time. Like, and we just wanted it so bad. We've wanted it for years, especially the seniors. We've played together since our sophomore year. And we've wanted it for so long, and it just definitely showed tonight. We're so happy. It's awesome. It certainly did. And, uh, talk about your season. You were tremendous uh, all season long, and uh, this team just so well coached. Uh, the development of the Definitely. players just, it was unbelievable how, you, uh, how the team developed uh, since the beginning of the season. 
Yeah, we definitely get better every day. We take practice so seriously and we work our hardest and it's just awesome. I think we completely deserve this. We work so hard every day. Well, congratulations on Thank being you. state champion. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. The Hockington Hillers volleyball team returned home to a police and fire escort after sweeping Weston to win the Division II state championship. It has been a great Hillers sports year so far with many playoff appearances, a couple state championships, and countless memories. To keep up with Hillers sports and everything else Hopkinton, check out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Facebook and Twitter pages. That will wrap up this edition of HCAM News Focus. We thank you for joining us and we hope for many more Hillers sports memories to come as we near the beginning of the spring sports season. To stay up to date on Hillers Sports and everything else in our community, tune in to HCAM News every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 6 and 10 p.m. I'm Tom Nappy. Take care and be well. As part of the Desire to Inspire program, which serves the goal to inspire through the marathon, 2014 Boston Marathon winner Meb Kaflesky was greeted loudly as he entered Hopkinton Middle School and at the high school, Meb was greeted with Welcome Meb signs featuring the Hiller H. Meb talked to students about being brought up in East Africa at a time of war, coming to America as a refugee, and what led to his road to becoming the first American Boston Marathon champion in 31 years. Meb encouraged the students to follow their dreams and never give up. You want to do something greater than yourself, you are going to achieve great things and you never know when that day is going to come. So you do the right thing, keep working hard, and keep doing being yourself. So last year when I came here to Hopkinton, getting started for the race, I was excited. It was emotional. It was tough. But you know you're going to give it the Boston strong. I want to give a map strong. I came with three goals. To win, even though many people thought I didn't have a chance to win because I was 38 years old. I want to finish on the podium, plan B. Third plan was to run a personal best. But when you work hard and do the best that you can, only you know what you can do. And I did, not that I only win, but I ran my fastest marathon ever. It's great to be in Hopkinton to be able to share my story of last year, but also my upbringing, how hard work and discipline and commitment can get you through a lot of things. Success does not happen overnight, but if you persistent with it and not give up, great things will happen. And here are the future of our next generation and just tell them, hey, keep on working hard, be the best you can be, and who knows what they're gonna be. You gotta be able to dig deep to do the best that you can. And you look back and he says, am I maintaining the gap or the guy is closing on me? You have to do the best that you can because 
not just for yourself, but for Bostonians, but for America, but for the international. I mean, it's a lifetime, a lifetime of discipline and hard work and consistency that I'll be able to win the victory. You know, it's not for lack of trying. I was third in 2006 and then I was ten, uh, fifth in 2010, but I worked very hard last year just because it was probably going to be my last marathon and what was on, on the line and uh, gave my, my all and I was ready to, to live with the consequence if I get caught. But I just gave him the Boston Strong, Mev Strong, and I came with the victory and uh, personal best. And uh, I feel delighted to be the first American in 31 years to do that. Quite an unbelievable achievement. Uh, you'll be running again uh, this year. You're hoping to beat last year's record? You know, I'm here with the same goal. I want to be win. I want to be in the podium or run a personal best. If I could do any of those three, I'll be very delighted. And obviously, hey, if I could win it again, that would be huge. The students also got the chance to ask the 2014 Boston Marathon winner questions. Um, what has been your biggest struggle as you've been trying to achieve your goals? You have this internal information what you are capable of doing and not doing. In 2011, I was a Nike athlete for a long time, for 12 years. And at one point, it says, you know, you're getting old, and they didn't renew the contract. But I never went for the money of, or media. I just worked hard to get that seventh grade P class that I ran 520 to maximize that potential. So sometimes you get a struggle. But if you work hard and believe in what you want to do, you're going you're gonna to achieve it. I mean, if I had my, you know, with other company, I, have, I would have retired probably in 2012. But I still love it. I still have a good time and enjoy it. And I'm competitive guy. I want to compete this year. I'll be here on April 20th to hopefully defend my title and then make, maybe hopefully make one more Olympic team in 2016. Selectman John Mosier welcomed Meb as an honorary citizen of Hopkinton. Your heart and your victory speak to us all. You represented us all. Meb, you are our champion. And now I'd like to present you this proclamation designating you as an honorary citizen of Hopkinton. From the town of Hopkinton, the Board of Selectmen hereby recognizes Mebraham Meb Kefladzi, 2014 Boston Marathon winner and first American to win the Boston men's race since 1983 as honorary citizen of the town of Hopkinton, signed under our hand and seal this 17th day of March 2015.